Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 13 for May the 29th, 2016. We're still in Unit 3 entitled Fullness of Faith. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Getting Back on Track. The devotional reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 44 verses 23 through 26. Our background scripture is Luke chapter 19 verse 1 through 10 and we'll be studying today those verses from the 19th chapter of Luke verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, The Son of Man came to seek and to save uh, what was lost. That's Luke chapter 19 verse 10 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to remember the details of the encounter of Zacchaeus with Jesus. Number two, believe that they can make necessary dramatic changes in their lives with God's help. And the third aim, uh, repent of their shortcomings and then commit to living godly lives. We have... Uh, four outlines today that we will be discussing. Zacchaeus, the sinner, is the first one. Zacchaeus, the seeker. Uh, Zacchaeus, the salt. And finally, Zacchaeus, the saved. We certainly thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share another word with you from our Sunday School lesson. We hope that you have been following along with us. Um, our survey, if you will, of the Gospel of Luke. We conclude um, Unit 3 today uh, with uh, this narrative of uh, the story of Zacchaeus uh, from Luke chapter 19, uh, verses 1 through 10. And we hope that... Uh, uh, you will study the background scripture taken from Isaiah chapter 44 verses 23 through 26. It's very important that we understand um, as a people, um, as a humanity of what Jesus came to do. That our lives are uh, parallel. Uh, that we seek uh, to identify with the purpose of Christ's coming into our sinful world. I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson taken from the adult quarterly. Zacchaeus was a chief publican, head of a large office of tax collectors. Publicans were classed with harlots. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 21 verse 31 and 32. They were hated generally because the taxes were for a foreign power. Jericho was a city of the priests. Jesus chose a publican rather than a priest to abide with. Zacchaeus was converted immediately and gave genuine evidence of it. Jesus had told the rich young ruler to give all. That was in Luke chapter 18 verse uh, 22. Zacchaeus gave half and Jesus pronounced him an heir of salvation. A couple of things that uh, we want to be able to uh, remember uh, from this lesson as we conclude this gospel uh, according to Luke focusing on Jesus the Son of Man uh, from Luke chapter 9 uh, verses 51 through the 21st chapter of Luke verse 38 uh, they present Jesus journey to and ministry uh, in Jerusalem but I couldn't help but think about the word desperation um, that word just simply means it is a loss of hope and surrender to despair uh, secondly it's a state of hopelessness leading to rashness. Uh, the synonym for that word rashness is to be adventurous. And this word uh, desperation uh, it will go a long way in uh, helping us to understand why 
a grown wealthy man in Zacchaeus has resulted in climbing a tree. But we want to take a look at this first outline entitled Zacchaeus the Sinner. This is taken from Luke chapter 19 uh, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible says Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Verse 2, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Here uh, we are able to see that Zacchaeus, as it says here uh, in this outline, that he's a sinner. And we want to understand uh, that uh, Zacchaeus, um, he's not a sinner because he is placed in the New Testament. He is a sinner because of Genesis chapter 3, when Adam fell in the garden. Subsequently, all humanity um, uh, was born in sin. Uh, we, ought, we have to keep in mind that Jesus... Um, working in the will and the plan of God um, came into this sinful world to save sinners because of the fall back over in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, and as we look at this lesson as Jesus uh, closes out his journey on his way to the cross uh, the key verse says he came. Jesus came. He came into this world to rectify the situation that had taken place in the garden. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 records, Jesus said that he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but he came to fulfill. Uh, and so Zacchaeus uh, represents, if you will, uh, mankind that has not come in contact with Jesus as of yet uh, so as to be saved or to be converted to be changed but that is going to happen for him as we get along into this lesson but uh, it goes on to say here in this first uh, second verse if you will that he was a chief tax collector a publican if you will and he was rich uh, but yet, as a sinner, he's poor. On the outside, he, he has a lot of wealth. Uh, he doesn't need or want for anything. Uh, but on the inside, he's broke. Uh, and we have to understand, uh, as we get into this commentary here, as Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he entered Jericho with the intention of passing through it. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was not only a tax collector, but also he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He had become very rich by collecting taxes on the famous balsam, those were trees of Jericho, and on the costly imports from Damascus and Arabia. While he had finances and fine things, he did not have friends. Money cannot buy one moment of happiness or peace for the person who has sold his life to evil. Zacchaeus may have taken a job as a way to get rich without giving a thought to how this business would affect others. But his conscience was nagging at him constantly. He needed relief. How does one spell relief? The answer is Jesus. Some very profound um, comments here concerning uh, a man's life, Zacchaeus' life. Uh, he spent his life making money, but yet he was without any real substance. You know, and we have to take note of that as we seek to become successful. Uh, uh, we hear that word a lot. Uh, but back over in the first chapter of Joshua, God defines success uh, for Joshua. He basically tells him, don't let this word that I'm giving you depart from you. He said, meditate on this 
day and night and then uh, you will have good success but here money all of the money that Zacchaeus has the wealth that he possesses uh, he is still broke in his spirit he is still empty in his spirit but his conscience uh, is bothering him something is lacking and he understands that I'm sure if his money uh, was able to give him the relief that he needed he would have purchased it I want you to look at Psalm 32 and we might let's just go over there very quickly because I want to read this uh, I want us to see uh, clearly the spiritual posture of Zacchaeus uh, because uh, that word desperation uh, we're going to see that play out later on uh, in this story concerning him Psalm 32 I, I want to go down to verse 1 uh, the Bible says blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Verse 3, When I kept silent, my bones grew old, through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Verse 5, and, and I want you to catch this here. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So here, uh, even from this psalm, we get a good idea uh, that uh, because Zacchaeus has not confessed his sins before God as of yet uh, so down on the inside even unto his bones as the psalmist says he's wasting away his vitality is, 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 is wasting away his strength his physical his mental strength is wasting away uh, and this is where Zacchaeus is in his spirit uh, I want you to keep that in mind. It'll make a little sense as we go a little further in Luke's gospel. Uh, but here in the 19th chapter of Luke, verse 3 and 4, this second outline is entitled Zacchaeus the Seeker. Again, from the NIV translation, verse 3 says, He wanted to see who Jesus was. Why did he want to see Jesus is the question. Maybe he has heard and, uh, about all of the miracles that Jesus has performed uh, during his journey. But he has now in verse 3, Zacchaeus has a desire uh, because of his situation in his spirit. But the Bible goes on to say, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. You know, I, as I said earlier, it's important that uh, we identify in a way or in a manifestation with the purpose in which Jesus came. We see this uh, uh, played out here that because he came Jesus to seek and to save that which is lost Zacchaeus in turn becomes a seeker he identifies with what Jesus came to do by moving in a proactive way to meet the will and the, uh, the purpose in which Jesus has come into the world that's that's very important that we do this because if we just lay with the fact that uh, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost and we do nothing about uh, responsibility or taking responsibility for seeking him out ourselves uh, and that's the point that we want to make so uh, verse 4 says he ran 
he will he got in a hurry and not only that he's a short man but uh, uh Zacchaeus but he finds a tree uh, uh we could spend all day on this verse alone just looking at uh what was driving this man this wealthy man to 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 want to see Jesus to such extent that he's running he's climbing to get a glimpse of Jesus coming his way how does he know he's going to be able to see Jesus from uh, the position that he may take in this sycamore tree but he's mapped all of these things out and so it goes on to say Zacchaeus was determined to see Jesus do you see that desperation in this text do you see how uh, uh, Zacchaeus has such a desire in his spirit uh, it, it, I don't find here that he's uh, looking at uh, maybe what somebody else would say about him and uh, what grown man climbs a tree except he has a need way down on the inside but he wanted to see who Jesus was he apparently had hoped to melt into the crowd where he could go unnoticed by Jesus but he was short and could not see over the crowd what could he do he decided to be proactive you know and and, and that's very important for us uh, as people of God and we have to make sure that uh, uh, we we become proactive people we become seekers uh, the Bible is clear it tells us uh, that if we seek we're going to find uh, he so here's Zacchaeus he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus some of the world's worst sinners will go the extra mile to see Jesus we should always be ready to share the message of salvation with the vilest of transgressors by the side of the road Zacchaeus perched himself in the tree where he could get a look at Jesus he had taken the right step Jesus was the one he needed to see but just seeing Jesus is never enough Zacchaeus future depended on his next step you know I was thinking about that uh, our future uh, so much has said about that and, and I know that we uh, we make a lot of plans we make great strides into planning our future but I I, I won't uh, uh, go over there uh, now but I want you to read 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 uh, the question is asked here in the quarterly the Bible declares that Jesus is a friend of tax collectors and sinners as Matthew 11 19 how did Jesus demonstrate that reality in today's lesson he says in the key verse again this is Luke's uh, uh, account the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost this is the so called golden text of the gospel of Luke and we see Jesus uh, coming to the people who needs him most uh, you know the righteous folks we are edified by the message of Jesus Christ we don't need to be saved again but somebody that's lost uh, that has never been converted has never been born again has never been changed that individual needs Jesus desperately and so he came uh, for these individuals uh, that are so-called lost and we are lost uh, uh, because of our nature uh, that that term uh, we could trace that back to to Genesis as I said in chapter 3 uh, that man lost contact or fellowship with God when he was kicked out of the garden he lost uh, 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 the grace and the mercies of God he lost uh, uh, the, 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 the fruit if you will of the fellowship uh, with God he lost obedience uh, uh, to keep the commandments of the Lord that God had given to Adam and Eve he lost everything and so God was not satisfied with that position and so he sent 
God sent his only begotten son to find those who were so-called lost in the sinful nature. We are lost in that old Adamic nature and we have to be found by Jesus Christ. We have to be discovered by Jesus Christ. And I want you to keep that in mind. So here in this third outline is entitled Zacchaeus the Salt. This is Luke chapter 19 verses uh, 5 through 7. I want to read this from the NIV translation. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. Verse 6. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Verse 7. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. How did these two individuals, Jesus and Zacchaeus, get to know one another? Uh, We don't see anything else where they had ever met but Jesus knows his name and he sees him and he gives him instructions to come down out of this tree I want to go home with you I want to stay with you Uh, uh, you know I want to come into this fellowship with you Uh, and so he obeyed in verse 6 Zacchaeus did he he came down out of the tree at, at once you know, I, I love these these words here that 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 give us uh, 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 some understanding about how a salvation is something that is an urgent matter. Uh, uh, we need to hurry up and get saved, if you will. We need to hurry up and let Jesus into our hearts. We need to do that immediately. We need to do that right now. Uh, the book of Hebrews said, The day you hear it, my voice, saith the Lord, harden not your heart. So he came down at once and he welcomed him. You know, we ought to be glad to receive the salvation uh, that Jesus has to offer us. And, and here we see onlookers uh, that are muttering and complaining that, you know, that Jesus is a guest of a sinner. Uh, and sometimes people will do that and and maybe that's the reason why we we haven't come to the Lord is because we are we are worried about what others might say uh, about our fellowship with the Lord but if you're going to get this salvation if you're going to get what the Lord has promised you you're going to have to overstep uh, these hurdles when Jesus reached the spot he looked up and said to him Zacchaeus come down immediately what an exciting and three and thrill filled day this would be for this hated man. He thought that he was hidden to be sure. No one can conceal himself or herself from the all seeing eyes of Jesus. We have to remember that today. God says my eyes are in every place beholding the evil and the good he knows who you are he knows what you're doing he knows how you feel he knows what you think he understands your plans and how you're trying to maneuver in life he knows our strengths and he knows our weaknesses and and this is why we should understand this Jesus is coming to into this world and even at this time to save individuals that he knows the condition that they're in. Nobody has to tell him he never would have come into the world to save anybody if he did not understand the needs that needed to be met. So I want you to read the first uh, chapter of the Gospel of John. I was just the Spirit of the Lord was just reminding me that Jesus coming into the world, he enlightens every man. You know, everybody that that, that accepts him, God will enlighten you uh, and, and bless your understanding and, and your awareness. But this is what uh, uh, the text is telling us today. Zacchaeus was on the spot. Everybody was looking at him and the crowd was waiting to see how the Lord would handle this tax collecting sinner. Not much is mentioned regarding the dialogue that followed between the Savior and the sinner, but we are aware of how the plot unfolded. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. 
the chief tax collector did not argue nor did he excuse himself from the scene he immediately realized that moment was one charged with fixing of his destiny he realized do you realize you need Christ in your life do we realize we cannot make it do you realize maybe the way that you're feeling and that you're thinking is because you don't have the peace that God is offering you uh, through Jesus Christ Uh, uh, we have so many weaknesses so many things that uh, uh, we 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 don't understand that is happening to us you know my mind went back uh, uh, some years ago uh, as an alcoholic and I remember uh, all of my days uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, that I drank as much as I did is because I was as much as I had family and and things around I was always depressed I was always low in my spirit and so I, I thought that if I if I drank a little bit uh, that would help soothe the pain that I had down on the inside but it didn't work and I spent years wasting away my life and my time and 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 the good health that God had given me uh, trying to satisfy something that only Jesus could fulfill I want you to remember that because many times we 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 take on these substances uh, uh, sometimes we we take on these attitudes uh, of, of trying to work it out on our own Zacchaeus is a wealthy man and he is so broke on the inside he is so desperate on the inside I can imagine what that must have been like I I can understand a boy or a little girl climbing a tree but a grown man climbing a tree to see the Savior coming his way I want you to know that that is a desperate situation he was really really uh, doing very poorly uh, in his spirit Zacchaeus was but it goes on to say here the chief tax collector he didn't argue about this thing he was face to face with the forgiving life changing and life elevating savior how did people react to the invitation extended to Zacchaeus by Jesus verse 7 details their reaction he has gone to be the guest of a sinner their reaction was dripping with sarcasm you know nobody uh, I, I love this uh, and I want to share this with you those of you that are going through something in your life and you tell somebody about what you're going through and they give you an alternative to the real uh, 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 issue or the real relief in your life but when you choose Christ they tend to criticize but they can't help you with what your heart is dealing with and what your mind is dealing with so my point is be encouraged stay with the Lord he is the only one if you read Isaiah chapter 57 verse 21 you will see that he says even to Judah at that time there would be no peace for the wicked declares the Lord can you imagine if we are engaged in evil or living in, 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 in evil a lifestyle even as this man uh, Zacchaeus he had no peace down on the inside and that's why his situation was desperate that's why this wealthy man took to climbing a tree with all that he had he could have bought anything that he wanted but not he couldn't have purchase peace for his life let us remember that he goes on to ask here in the quarterly can you recall the exhilaration and excitement you experienced when you first met the Lord as your Savior I can and I know you can too God has uh, brought us from a mighty long way and and I remember some years ago being sick uh, for more than two years because of my sin and going to doctor after doctor and they not be able to help me but do you know Jesus came 
uh, uh, this was my day to climb the tree as Zacchaeus. I needed to see Jesus. Uh, and my situation was desperate. So I climbed a tree, if you will. I became a seeker of the Lord. And I declare unto you today, I saw Jesus. I met him. And he had me to come down out of that tree. Just like he did for Zacchaeus. And he wanted to stay in my house, in my heart. Uh, I want you to read Revelation chapter 3. But we have to come back here. And this man uh, is in trouble, Zacchaeus. But he's in the process of getting what he needs for his life uh, and for his destiny. This last outline is entitled Zacchaeus the Saved. This is taken from Luke chapter 19 verses 8 through 10. From the King James Version. As Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You can tell here in this outline here that a conversion has taken place on the inside. Uh, uh, it do, we don't get any other details. Uh, but whatever happened in that exchange between Jesus and Zacchaeus in his house has caused Zacchaeus to stand up and say to his Lord, Look, I've got a bunch of goods here, and I'm going to give it to the poor. Now, these are the outward manifestations of an inward conversion. Keep that in mind. Uh, 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 the, the fifth chapter of Matthew said, Let your light so shine that men might see your good work. So whatever happened in this conversion process, Zacchaeus is doing some things that he has not done before. And Jesus confirms to him that he has the true salvation because he knows that he has passed from death unto life because Zacchaeus has now love for the brethren. He has love for the poor. He wants to be able to give back uh, 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 what he has. And then he says, and if I have taken anything, this is a clear sign of true conversion. And this is a, a lot of uh, why sometimes we don't get the connection with God that we should. We don't want to take responsibility for our sin. Uh, uh, the first epistle of John tells us uh, in the first, uh, uh, first chapter, he said, if any man say he does not have a fault, he is a lie and the truth is not in him. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And here Zacchaeus is confessing that if I have taken anything from any man, by false accusation, I want to not just give it back to him. I want to give it back fourfold. I want you to read Leviticus because this is a part of the Mosaic law. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 5 and Numbers chapter 5 verse 7 dealing with the law of restitution uh, uh, and the law of trespass or the offerings. Uh, according to trespasses and, and, and also included in that fifth chapter of Numbers is a confession that is made. When you do wrong, you confess it. Now that was a part of the law. And Zacchaeus is not only doing uh, what is required and restoring uh, 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 the ill-gotten gain, if you will, but he's paying it back four times the amount that he has taken. Now you know Jesus has taken a hold of his heart. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, 
I will pay back four times the amount. There is no indication as to when Zacchaeus spoke these words. It seems most likely that he did so after the dinner. When he had observed the Lord's demeanor and had heard his word. Yes, beautiful. When we hear the word of God, what do we do? We should be convicted by the word of God. And most certainly, Zacchaeus was convicted of his sins. That what, that's what the word of God does for us. If we read it and we study it, you'll see yourself. You will see your shortcomings. You will see the things that you need to confess and to repent of. And if any man, let me just say this, if you are going to be saved, if you're not, if you're going to be saved, you must make a confession unto salvation. You have to uh, uh, make restitution, if you will, of your sins by simply acknowledging that you are a sinner. I'm not talking about a particular deed. I'm talking about a nature. Uh, uh, this is where this is the foundation of sin. It is a root. It, it comes from the nature uh, that you and I were born with. Psalm 51 tells us that we were born in sin and we were shaped in iniquity. And so here. Uh, Zacchaeus is convicted of his sins and he had to act on the conviction. Uttering the half of my goods I give to the poor was a new experience for, for Zacchaeus. You know, so like most tax collectors, he had previously been interested only in taking. Isn't that something? He was always taking advantage of of individuals he was always doing the wrong thing and and, and, and sometimes that happens to us when we want to uh, uh, get ahead in life and we want to move ahead and we call these things blessings when we know we have cheated others to obtain and we have uh, undermined someone else to get ahead that is not a blessing so uh, uh, just because we have the authority to do something it does not mean that it is a righteous act of God. So this man, even though he had a position as a tax collector, he found a way to use his position to cheat others out of their uh, uh, money and out of whatever he could get from them. But the Lord came into his heart and and convicted him so he said and, and, and you know that has to be a a, a journey a, a, of sorts in Zacchaeus life do you know he has to go backwards he has to go back how many people did he cheat the Bible doesn't tell us. how much money did he cheat he's gonna literally give out all of the money four times as much per person that he has cheated isn't that awesome he is making restitution so he's got to go back and get his records and, and he knows where he cheated and what he did that he shouldn't have done. And he says, I'm going to make this thing right. What a blessing to know Jesus. Uh, uh, and, and, and I love this here. This is a new experience. All of this money that he has obtained from people that he shouldn't have, he's got to give it back. What a blessing for them to, if you can imagine in your mind, here comes Zacchaeus to your door saying, you know, I owe you this money and you're not expecting it. You're just trying to get by because you're paying your taxes. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You know you've been cheated, but you can't go to anybody for fear and, and, and you can't fight this battle. But here comes comes Zacchaeus after he has met Jesus and says, I want to give you not just the money that I stole from you, but I'm going to add on four times uh, what I took from you. God, as nobody can do you like Jesus. Keep that in mind. So it goes on to say that Jesus responds to Zacchaeus admission of sin and his resolve to try to undo what he uh, had done is seen in verse 9 to Z today salvation has come to this house he said in this context salvation refers to inner wholeness the salvation of the soul salvation had come to Zacchaeus not because of his blood descent but because of his faith which was like Abraham's 
But the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This verse is a summary of the entire message of the Gospel of Luke, which stresses the seeking and saving work of the heavenly Messiah. The question is asked here, after Zacchaeus met Jesus, what evidence do we see that his mindset had been changed? Why was Zacchaeus so anxious to restore to those whom he had defrauded? What evidence do we see that we know Jesus? That is the million dollar question. What evidence is there is, is there in our lives that we know Christ in the pardon of our, of our sin? Do we have love in our heart for our fellow man? Do we tell one another the truth? Do we uh, uh, seek to be a blessing in one another's lives? Or, or do we just harm whoever comes in our path? What evidence is there that we know Jesus? That is what the world wants to see from us. This is a very powerful lesson uh, to help us to understand. Remember that Psalm 32 that we gave you? How we wasted away. But when, when, when the psalmist says, I confessed my sins and I was forgiven you know I'm sure that was a glorious day and salvation ought to present to us a glorious day going forward that we are adding uh, 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 what we should be to our uh, society I, I've said this over the years when you get saved just before we close out I just want to share this with you when you get saved we're not better than anyone but we certainly are better quality of individual because of Jesus Christ. We are not a detriment to society any longer. We are now sowing uh, uh, seeds of fruit uh, uh, unto salvation and of repentance to our communities. We're not destructing uh, or destroying ourselves and being destructive in our communities. But Zacchaeus has turned his life around just by recognizing that he had some desperation in his heart and his mind. He needed to get this thing right down on the inside. And he did uh, 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 the, the thing that he should have done, which is to seek after and to go after Jesus Christ. He made sure that he was not going to let this opportunity pass by. He was not going to let the crowd stop him. He was not going to let the fact that he was a short man stop him. He was not going to let the, the fact go by that that it was just, just so much going on that I really didn't get a chance to see Jesus. He finds a tree and he goes in that tree so he can see Jesus. And I guarantee you, Jesus set it up that way. He knew that this man was coming. And he knew that he would meet him. And he knew that he would save him. I hope, trust, and pray that we've given you something to, to think about today. But I want to offer this closing prayer uh, in our quarterly. It says, Dear Heavenly Father, you are so powerful and loving. Thank you for coming and finding us and rescuing us from all kinds of hiding places. May we forever express our thanks and adoration to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so again, we thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share this with you today. Please read this story and see what the Lord will demonstrate and what he will show you that you might need to do in your life. And until such time that we meet again, we say God bless you.